What's up everybody, it's David Beers with 39 Minute Workout and Wellness and uh, today on our, um, my new Facebook group called My Health Fitness Upgrade, which is really about your health and fitness upgrade, not mine, um, I wanted to talk about what I prepped you all today with. If you saw my picture of my wife sitting in the treatment room, I was going to talk about is acupuncture just a placebo effect and do you have to believe in it to have success? But what I really thought about that question, when I really thought about that question, and I will answer those two questions, commonly asked questions, um, but when I really thought about those two questions, what came up in my mind was, number one, that's probably not what you actually want to know, unless you just have an intellectual interest in acupuncture, um, and that those are really just intellectual questions. What you really want to know is, can I help, you know, can, can something help you get out of chronic and physical or emotional pain? Because that's what really matters. I, I don't care what we're talking about, whether it's, you know, drinking baking soda, putting coconut oil on things, going uh, paleo, working out, doing acupuncture, whatever the heck it is, your question, what really matters to you is, how the hell can you get help, right? How can you get out of pain or some sort of discomfort or any sort of symptom that sits in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, bothers you, but you don't really know what to do about it. And so I'm going to answer those frequently asked questions first, and then I'm going to get into really how to help you understand how to deal with those few symptoms. Um, I do believe that most people walking around have at least, probably at least three symptoms that they deal with. And a lot of times what happens is, you assume that you can't do anything about it because it's always been there or it's been there for a long, long time. You um, don't want to do sort of more tests and take meds for everything and you are at a loss with it so you just sort of deal with it. And that often isn't putting you at the highest level of your life satisfaction and then so you start trying to treat yourself with bad habits like bad diet habits, addictions, um, why do we smoke or drink or eat sugar when we want to lose weight because we are trying to treat one problem with a bad fix and so here goes the spin-off of a lot of our physical and emotional health problems but I want to help you start changing that so let's talk about how to really shift that and help each of you get out of pain and take common symptoms you struggle with, whether it be back pain, neck pain, headaches, menstrual pain, menstrual symptoms, sleep problems, anxiety and depression, all of these things, right? When they don't go checked, you got to either what? Grin and bear it, uh, take a med, which often creates more problems than it creates good, or squelch that pain with some sort of addictive personality, addictive habit, whether you think it is addictive. Um, we all do, when when, not, when unchecked and when not being conscious about our own treatment plan, we all do reach out for sort of bad vices to deal with and, and quell our pain. So the first question is, is acupuncture just a placebo effect? And the answer is, uh, hell no. Um, so the easiest way I have to defend the idea that acupuncture is absolutely, absolutely not placebo effect is, do you know how incredibly popular acupuncture is with the equine and pet in world, right? Um, people are all over the place getting acupuncture for their pets and big time in the horse industry. Um, things like and with horses for Lyme's disease and joint issues and um, stomach issues and for pets. All sorts of things that would bother humans too. Well, there's this one little thing about pets and also kids are another good example. They do not believe you are helping them when you stick an acupuncture needle in them. <laughs> there is no like, boy, I hope this works. No, they're like, hell, what are you doing to me? Right? So um, you don't have to believe it for it to work. And it's definitely not a placebo effect because pets don't have anything like a placebo effect. I always think it's really funny when I work with a client and they'll, um, they'll come to me for, you know, let's say chronic headaches and they've had them for 15 years, and I start treating them, and five treatments in, their pain is lessened, less frequent, and uh, the pain's dropped from like an eight to a three, and they will 
give anything credit but the treatment we've done together, even though they've struggled with it for 15 years. It's a really strange effect. They'll be like, it's got to be my new, you know, pillow that I got. It can't possibly be this thing I'm doing. Um, it's a funny thing. We want to, as adults, like, uh, give credit away somewhere else instead of be like, wow, this thing I'm doing and investing in is, is actually what's helping me. I don't know why adults love, love to do that, but a lot of people do that. And it's a, it's a funny little thing. But, um, um... So acupuncture is definitely not a placebo effect. It is incredibly uh, effective at helping people's pain, emotional symptoms, and physical symptoms. And I think it's going to really play such a huge role in the era of addictions to painkillers. Because people are in lots of pain, physical and emotional and they're reaching out for the wrong things to, to solve that. And a lot of times, Western medicine really is not a great answer. Because if you can't cut on it and you can't put a pill, take a pill for it, then what are you supposed to do? So let's talk about what you really have the question is, is um, how can I help you feel better? So let's talk about what it really takes to for you to get out of pain and start healing yourself. And it's more mental than specifically what you want, what you do. So number one, do you actually have, look, I, anybody I've ever helped, there's a couple, there's a commonality, some threads through them that are super important. And number one is, do you actually want to feel better? And I know that sounds like a stupid question, but you'd be surprised how many times people, when the rubber hits the road, they want to want to. They wish they wanted to lose 20 pounds. They wish they wanted to do something about their aching back that's bothered them for 20 years and is only getting worse. But they're so distracted with other things in their life that they're not making it a priority. So if that's you, you're probably not ready to deal with it. There is a level of which for you to get out of pain, you got to be, like they say in AA, if you don't know, sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to get to a point where you hate this thing more than the effort it takes to get better. Because if you don't want to put in the effort, you're not going to throw in your all and you're going to put your foot in the door to whatever you choose to do to solve it one foot in, one foot out, and we all know you can't get better doing that. So do you actually want to feel better? Like you want to play an active role in that. You don't just want to go, yeah, I, I, boy, I'd love to lose 10 pounds. Or, yeah, I'd love my back not to hurt. But I don't have the money. But I don't have the time. But, you know, that always means, well, I'm not really ready to do anything about it. Number two is do you lack the desire to reach out for drugs and surgery as the solution. Uh, so this is, you know, I'm talking to the people that don't want to go get cut on or take another med to make their pain get better because they have a, a, a distinct uh, weariness around, around medications and needing to be on them or wanting to be on them. Um, a lot of the people who I really help they want to feel better, but they do not want to go on three or four or five meds. And I think that's really important because um, there's so many times where meds create more problems than they solve. And so you solve your back pain and now all of a sudden you have dry mouth and no libido and you can't sleep. And it's like, I, was that really the best answer? So if you want to get away from the world of going and running high, expensive, expensive tests and getting put on a med or getting surgery that's risky and dangerous, then I think you are more ready to actually take care of your pain. And number three, are you willing to do what it takes? I was a little bit alluded to this in number one, but number one is deciding that you actually want to get better. Number two, number three is, are you willing to do what it takes? Because nobody's healing by just having somebody else do it for them. Even if you choose acupuncture, chiropractic, or working out, you still have to play an active role in that. So that's number four is, uh, no, number three, sorry, is uh, you, you have to play an active role in actually getting better and choosing to and wanting to do better and, and be willing to take some action in that. So let's say you are chronic, um, you deal with uh, depression, which is something I've worked heavily with, and you are like, you come and you, hey Paula, what's up, and you uh, want, wave, I've never seen that before, I'm going to wave at you, I could just do it, but I hit the button, um, shit, where was I, where was I, where was I, I lost my place, I was excited to see Paula on here, and I lost my place, well, 
I'll skip over. I'll come back to it. Uh, number four. This is a big one. Number four and number five are really going to stretch you because they are big, hairy questions that trip people up emotionally. Number four is, are you attached to your symptom? And now everybody will like fly off at the handle if I say, hey, are you sure you actually want to lose weight? Hey, are you sure you actually don't want to be depressed? Because guess what? A lot of your effort is actually to keep yourself trapped in the pl same comfortable place where you are right now. And this is true of weight loss and getting out of pain. It is amazing how much we as human beings are really, even when we have something we find unpleasurable, negative, we're really freaking attached to doing what's comfortable and safe and, we're, and, we, and we are used to. And so, you know the word self-sabotage. This is where our ugly friend self-sabotage comes into play. And a lot of this is because we are willing to get out of pain, but we aren't willing to do the long haul work to get well. Right? Can you identify with that? Is that something you've felt before? Being willing to get out of pain means I'll do my first month of, of working out, but I'm not going to do my second month because I got out of pain. Right? I lost an inch and I lost 10 pounds, and I'm down a size, and I feel better, so now I'm going to quit, because the pain's gone. So, usually this means you are a little bit attached to your symptom and your story around it, and this is a dangerous one, because a lot of this is subconscious. You aren't necessarily thinking, yeah, I really actually like being heavy, because then I get to stand behind it, and I don't have to be responsible to go work out, because that takes time and money, and so I'm really actually comfortable where I am, and boy, if I felt better about myself, I'd have to be more intimate with my partner, and then I'd have to feel vulnerable, and I'd have to show up at work differently, because I really want a promotion, but that would mean working harder and showing up as a bigger person, and right? So all of a sudden, this story you didn't even consciously create is, is sitting there, and um, and creating all sorts of havoc with you actually reaching your goal, which is getting out of pain or improving some aspect of your life. So you got to really look at unconscious stories when you look at healing pain and getting out of any sort of symptoms of, do you actually have stories wrapped around these symptoms that are keeping you locked into that pattern? And I guarantee you, if you've struggled for a long time with a symptom, you got stories that keep you there. All of us do. All of us do, okay? Um, and weight loss and pain are, are sort of the perfect example. There's so much emotional crap around weight loss. And a lot of it is that we are comfortable where we are. We identify with that. We've written a story around it. Chances are if you're 30 pounds overweight, you've written a story around it where that is you. You are 30 pounds overweight. I am a woman. I'm this. I'm 30 pounds overweight. It's hard to lose weight. Um, I don't like working out. Working out's expensive. I don't like eating healthy food. I don't like, right? So we've created all these little stories and nooks and crannies to live into the story of I'm 30 pounds overweight, 45, mother of three, yada, yada, yada. A lot of your willingness to get well is a willingness to analyze those stories, to shed light on them, to expose your own BS, and be willing to... Um, get real with yourself and decide that, go back to number one, do you actually want to feel better? And number three, are you actually willing to do what it takes? Because it means confronting those stories, pushing through, not just doing the first month's work of getting out of pain, but doing the next two, three, four, five months work of building healthier habits into your life. That's really the question that you got to face for yourself. Are you willing not to just do enough of it to take the pain away, but do enough of it to get better? Okay, that's powerful stuff for you all if you're listening this far because it's most often the problem with why when people reach out to me, whether for acupuncture or cat or fitness, and they want to lose weight or get out of pain, so many people in our culture only want to pull it down enough to not bug them day to day, but are not willing to do the work to truly revolutionize their life, change their stories, rip off the band-aid, change who they are in the world, look different, feel different, and, and perform better. But the ones that do, I freaking love to work with because they're really rewarding. And, and a lot of it is just willing to screw up and admit your stories and shed light on them and, and get really, really brutally honest. So 
Um, number five, the last piece is, are you coachable? Why does that matter? Because chances are, um, if you knew how to get yourself out of the problem, you'd have done it by now. And you've got to be willing to be coachable because some of this stuff that I've just talked about, about how are you locked in pain? How are your stories holding you there? Um, it's not easy to always figure out how to get you from point A to point B alone. A lot of times it's you're grasping at straws and reading this and seeing that and, 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 and grasping. But if you are coachable and you have a coach to work with, then you have somebody who, if they've helped people like you get the results you want, then you have somebody who can actually under over you know flip over the, the stones ask the right questions pull out pieces find out what you really want create a plan for you to actually carry through with that and make that happen um doing that on your own a lot of times is dangerous because you are just grasping at what i find people on their own do is they start grasping at well i'm gonna I'm going to try this diet and that workout and I'm going to do that little thing and they start piecing together and cobbling together a plan that doesn't make any sense. So they end up having a good effort but bad bad execution. And and two is they don't even know. I mean, do we are we are we humble enough to to know our own BS stories or do we need somebody else to help pull it out of them? Chances are you have a good friend or a coach or a spiritual leader or somebody who's who's able to take you to those edges and stretch your edges, but do we do that for ourselves? Not usually. Um, so those are the questions I want you all to ask yourself in terms of getting well, getting better, getting beyond your stuck place of not being very comfortable or happy with how you are physically. Because whether you want to lose weight or get out of physical or emotional pain, there has to be a willingness for those of you who are getting on this late, as I see the numbers are going up, um, there has to be a willingness that you actually want to get better and you don't just want to want to. Uh, I'm just going to cover the five things I covered. And number two is, are you somebody who isn't interested in quick fixes and don't really want to be on one more medication or keep going and running tests? You actually want to fix your pain without just going on more meds that create as many symptoms as the problem you had in the first place. Number three is, are you willing to do what it takes? Because all change, whether it's getting out of pain, losing weight, all change means you're going to have to put in effort from day one to however long it takes to really change. And usually that's not just one month. If you've had pain or weight for more than a couple you know, years, it's going to be a process and you actually have to take steps to do that and it's going to require effort on your part. Even if you get acupuncture, even if you work out, even if you change your diet, it's not just going to be boom and it's done. It's a process, not an event, okay? Um, number, number four is, are you attached to your symptoms and your story? And this was one that I think is probably the most important part of this entire talk is you probably have ways in which you think you want to be better but you actually are really comfortable where you are and you've created a story of who you are wrapped around that symptom and you've got to do the good work of uncovering that story and understanding it so you can be brutally honest with yourself and get clear on how you are empowering yourself to stay sick and stay not well and stay unhappy and shed light on that not to judge yourself, but to go, oops, there's my BS, I found it. And then change that story to something more empowering and then lay in the foundation of action, whether it be diet, treatment, or, or exercise. Those are the actions that you will hear from me over and over and over again, the three pillars of health. Treatment, meaning something like acupuncture or breath work or meditation. Training, meaning exercise, and nutrition, meaning food. Those are the three ways I will teach you how to heal how to improve your health, how to bust your stories, how to create new habits that last for a lifetime, okay? Um, and then number five is, are you coachable? I put that in there because for a lot of people, doing this work on their own can be very confusing, and they're not sure how to really put the pieces into action, right? This is why we hire coaches, is because our coach sees a bigger picture for us than we see for ourselves often. They'll ask the tough questions we don't want to ask of ourselves, and they've helped people just like you get there. So that's my um, my thinking, my questioning for today. If you have any questions about specific stuff or anything, even more important, if any aha popped up in your mind that you are like, bam, that's it, like that's the issue, is I am wrapped up around my story around weight, and I 
it's time to start cleaning up my story. Um, so, as uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. As always, check us out um, at 39minuteworkout.com. I have, uh, for anybody who wants to take the next step and really get serious about your weight or your physical or emotional health in ways where your story might suck and really be holding you back and you need a plan and you need support and accountability, um, go ahead and check us out at 39minuteworkout.com. I've got um, acupuncture treatment, kettlebell, treat, kettlebell training locally here in Ellicott City, and then online, uh, also solutions that you can do from home. Uh, my passion, my mission, my wife and I run this business. Our passion is to really help empower men and women who want to feel better, want to get honest, brutally honest with themselves, and start creating a better life for themselves, and carry that out into real and lasting change, not just create little right little one month successes that you can then go oops i tried it didn't work right we want to really help you change your health get out of pain lose weight whatever it is you need to do to, to live a happier healthier higher functioning life so check us out at 39 minuteworkoutcom or fill out the coaching link below if you want to set up a little 15 minute uh, coaching call with us and you can see how we can drill deeper and go in with your life and really start to heal some of your physical and emotional symptoms we'd love to do that work with you that's really what we're jazzed up to do for people so uh, that's something you feel called for and you're ready to get serious about that and you don't want to want to you actually are ready to do something about it go ahead and click that link love to uh see how we could help, what, what stories we could uncover, and how we could really put a plan together of action. Um, any of you have any, any other specific questions, um, I could turn into other posts or Facebook Lives that I could do. I, I'd love to help, um, you know, any sort of physical, emotional health kind of questions that you have. I could, um, often if it's one that serves a community, I'll turn it into a Facebook Live just like this. So, um, four definitely resonates me. Change is happening. Thanks for this talk. Is, are you attached to, yeah. I mean, I think for is Paula, I think you're, a lot of people are going to be the same as that, and that's um, uh, the stories and being attached to our symptoms. I don't think we actively think that's what we do, but we definitely do that, all of us. And uh, being brutally honest with yourself is one of the biggest pieces you can do to, to, to change your life and your health. So good on you for doing that. I, I know you're doing that work because I know personally having work with you that that is the work you're doing. So congrats on that. Um, it's not easy. It's, e it's easier to bury our head in our sand and act like we're a victim to our own symptoms and just this is happening to me instead of, oops, I'm actually empowering it to stay that way. That's a, that's a tough conversation. So, um, all right, folks, thanks so much. I will see you next time.